you know, I worked for Alderman Harris. I started in 2006, and I worked all the way up until I was appointed uh, and then elected as state representative. And again, it just gave me an opportunity to uh, to work for the community, to uh, get to know uh, the pulse of the community, and uh, it just strengthened my love for my community, which is where I live. I live in the eighth ward. And <clears throat> jobs is a big issue nowadays, not just because of the uh, important statewide elections and mm -hmm. gubernatorial elections, but in general in light of this economic climate. Can sure. you tell us uh, the importance of jobs and uh, how your community has been affected? Yeah, I mean, jobs are important. Uh, I mean, you know it. I am an African-American male. And unfortunately, uh, whatever that unemployment number uh, currently is, just I think the recent numbers came out, they were lower than usual. But uh, whatever those ec numbers are, they usually double or if not triple uh, an African-American community for African-Americans. So I'm always pushing for jobs, not just the increase of jobs. We, we have had an influx of new jobs, but opportunities for real head of household jobs for folks in the community. I think that's what's needed. Uh, to pay a mortgage, you need a head of household job. We have a lot of homes in my community. Uh, we have folks who uh, have children and, uh, and want a better opportunity for those children. As a previous generation has some opportunity, the newer generation would like uh, those opportunities. So I'm always pushing for real jobs and real opportunities. I believe we have a caller on the line. Uh, hello, caller. You're on the air with Representative Evans. Hi, yeah, my question is about the minimum wage. Um, I know that there's a push here by Mayor Manuel to increase it to something like 1325 or something like that, but then we've got the Fight for 15 movement here who wants it to be $15 an hour. Um, where do you think that level should be for the minimum wage? Are you, are you involved in trying to raise it at all? And how do you even determine like what a good livable wage is? Yeah, I think um, you know the conversation, to, you mentioned two different things. You know, there's a minimum wage and you know, for your uh, normal minimum wage type jobs, but then there's a living wage. You know, uh, I would say that a living wage is a lot higher than the minimum wage. Uh, I am supporting uh, in the House of Representatives um, increase for minimum wage. Currently in Illinois, the minimum wage is $8.25. I am supporting an increase in that wage. I think we are determining uh, now, so your input is important, what that minimum wage should be. But the conversation on living wage is a different conversation. Um, and I think uh, we need to continue that conversation. Some people believe it's thirteen dollars. Some people believe it's uh, even higher than that. And uh, thank you for the question, caller. And I believe there's a uh, advisory referenda question, uh, referendum question on the ballot sure. this uh, this November. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the importance of this election in light of the races and the referenda questions on the ballot and getting out to vote? Yeah, you know. Whenever I talk to individuals, and, and it really bothers me when a person uh, chooses not to exercise their civic right and duty uh, as a citizen to vote, you know, definitely vote. Uh, clearly, you know, I'm a politician. I would like you to, if you live in the 33rd district, you know, support Marcus C. Evans Jr. Or the, or the people that I think are the best. But I want people to get out to vote. You know, if you're a woman, you know, women fought for years for suffrage for women. If you're an African American, if you you're a Caucasian and you didn't own property uh, years ago, you couldn't vote. I mean, there's not a reason for any segment of individuals uh, in the state of Illinois, in Cook County, in the city of Chicago, to not exercise their civic rights. So definitely get out to vote. And uh, go all the way down at the end of the ballot. Vote for those judges. Vote for uh, every office that's available on the ballot. Uh, it's very important, this election. But um, this election is important. I mean, we have two uh, leaders at the top of the ticket uh, who you definitely need to express your views on. And I think that's important. I'd like to remind uh, viewers you're watching uh, Political Forum, a community service uh, sponsored by Can TV. I'm Louis Mososa, board member here at Can TV, and uh, we urge everyone to call 312-738-1060 and get your questions in for Representative Marcus Evans. Uh, Representative, would you like to tell us the committees you serve <coughs> on and some of the uh, interesting pieces of legislation that uh, you might recall from this last session? Yeah, I think uh, being in the legislature, a lot of folks may or may not know you know, we work on a lot of different issues, topics. Uh, when you think about the state of Illinois, one of our top industries in the state is the agriculture industry. And I'm a, a boy from the south side of Chicago, so I think uh, I was an adult before I saw my first farm up close. So uh, getting the opportunity to delve into those uh, types of industries and, and, and bring a city perspective to uh, a committee like agriculture. I'm a member of the agriculture committee. Uh, it's another city of Chicago member, uh, Christian Mitchell. We both serve on the agriculture committee, uh, learning about the ag industry, uh, giving a city perspective to some of those issues. Uh, Revenue and Finance Committee in Springfield also serve business occupational license. We have a lot of 
various business license uh, issues in the state of Illinois. I get the opportunity to work on those in committee. Uh, elementary and secondary education, the foundation of education. I serve on that committee um, and also serve on an appropriations committee for general services, which covers a lot of the state agencies uh, that we all depend on or uh, people in our communities depend on. I believe we have a caller on the line. Uh, hello, caller. You're on the air. What's your question? Oh, Mr. Evans, it's a beautiful thing to see you. <laughs> Brother, you need some help for uh, canvassing for the upcoming election in November and the one that's coming in February. Yeah. You need signatures, and I am one that can meet you. So what is your address for so I can come and see you and talk to your representatives or who's there? Yeah, I mean, you can always uh, email me. Uh, the, the email is there. Uh, feel free to stop by the office and leave your information. Um, that is my public service office, so if there's anything you know politically related, you know, uh, my political volunteer team will contact you if that's needed. Um, or any way I can be helpful to you. I know I thank you for wanting to help me, uh, but I think we need to just team up uh, to help each other. we got enough problems uh, in our community. So let's, uh, let's, let's figure out a way we can solve some of these problems together. Thank you very much, caller. I believe we have another caller on the line. Uh, hi, you're on the air with Representative Evans. Yes, good afternoon, Mr. Evans. I wanted to know if you support the $15 um, increase for minimum wage. Yeah, I think, uh, thank you for calling. The previous caller uh, kind of touched on that issue. Um, I don't have a specific dollar amount. But I definitely support an increase in minimum wage. Uh, you know, my mother was a 18-year-old parent. Um, you know, we started in the housing projects in Prairie Course on 26 King Drive. Lived in Rosen. I live in a Chatham community. So, um, I mean, you're looking at an individual who knows hard times and struggle without question. So, um, I, I definitely do think we need to have an increase. That specific amount, whether it's 15, 13, or even higher, is one that we have to. Um, you know, definitely uh, determine uh, and, and pick the right one. But I am a co-sponsor in the House of Representatives, so I know there's a city portion that will determine uh, an increase, but um, I am on the bill, and the chief sponsor is Representative uh, Art Turner from West Side of Chicago. I am uh, a chief sponsor on that bill uh, and hope to see it pass in the near future. Thank you for your question. I believe we have another caller on the line. Uh, hi, you're on the air. Yes, good evening. How are you? Not bad. I have a question for you uh, concerning uh, pet coke. Yeah. I don't know uh, where you stand on that. I know that the city officials locally here are, are trying you know, to, to get the pet coke out, you know, out, of, the, um, out of the city. I, just, I mm -hmm. want to know uh, where do you stand on it? What is the state trying to do? Yeah, before, uh, and thank you for the call, I do represent a uh, portion of the east side. And I actually represent specifically where uh, those uh, K KCBX and uh, Beamsterboy are located. So that's my district. And I have been working uh, with John Pope. So it has not just been a city official. It's been a total team partnership. You know, uh, when the, before you know, it reached the media, you know, Alderman John Pope was uh, working to try to uh, solve that issue. I've been working with him since I've been in office to address the issue. Um, we Alderman Pope reached out to our Attorney General Lisa Maddock, and so I think that uh, the Congresswoman Robin Kelly has been a champion. Every level of elected office worked uh, to push that issue, uh, and our top leaders uh, continue to push it. Uh, but I was definitely uh, involved in uh, addressing the PECO, and will continue to be. I think I've been an, an, a reasonably environmental champion since I entered the General Assembly and the record shows. Thank you for your question. I believe we have another caller on the line. Uh, hi, caller. You're on the air. Hey, how's it going? Yeah, hi. Um, my question is this. Uh, why don't we encourage people to um, go ahead and use absentee ballots? If you don't. All you need to do is be a citizen. If you call in by the middle of the month, you can get an absentee ballot. Mm -hmm. And in the thoughtfulness of your own home, you can make your decisions. And if you need to get more information, you can before you're in the voting booth. Yeah, thank you, Carl. I think you, you brought up a great point. Um, yeah, I think we're getting to the point where there's a lot of different voting options. You know, the traditional way is to go to the ballot uh, and, and, and do it that way. That's the way I do it. I mean, it's more of a ceremonial thing for me and me and my family members. But absentee ballots is an option. You can uh, call my office. If you have a question, you can contact uh, your local election 
uh, agency, whether it's Chicago Board of Elections, whether it's uh, Cook County Elections. Uh, they have websites as well. So take advantage of each and every option. Early voting is a great option. I'm looking forward to the day where we can vote on our smartphones. I think that's going to be the future. You know, uh, technology will, uh, you know, encapsulate the voting process eventually to make it uh, convenient. But as of right now, there are a lot of options, and absentee ballot voting uh, is an option for sure. And if I'm correct, uh, you guys should, did change the law in Springfield this year as a pilot program to extend uh, – uh, early voting as That's well right. as late registration, so it'd be good to mm -hmm. see how that uh, helps the turnout. No question. Uh, in terms of legislation in the committees we discussed earlier, I know you've been a champion on some issues for senior citizens and homeowners yes. in light of what's been mm -hmm. happening with uh, mortgages and home ownership uh, in the economy. Would you care to talk about that piece of legislation? Yeah, you know, I represent a community with a lot of single-family homes. And when you think of your home, you know, you work hard and you, uh, you get your home. And many of the seniors pay off their homes. No mortgage. Mortgage-free on their homes. Uh, but there's folks out here, and I work with the uh, recorder of these, uh, Ken Yarbrough. There's folks out here that attempt to steal your property through a criminal clouding process. They go to the recorder of these office. And when I heard about this, I couldn't believe it myself. They go to the recorder of these office, and they actually, uh, you know, file false claims on your property. And this happens uh, hundreds of times per month. So the recorder is addressed and I pass legislation to increase the penalty and make this process more difficult. So protect the homeowners is important. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, I believe we have another caller on the line. Uh, hi, caller. What's your question? Hi, thank caller. You for taking, hi, thanks for taking my question. Yeah. Um, I have a uh, quick question. Um, where does the health care stand right now in regards to mental health for the homeless people? Uh, thank you for, for your call, call. I mean, that was a that was a lot to that question. So I asked to the best of my ability, um, and I definitely support uh, mental health funding. You know, I think um, this year and in the years prior, I mean, you have seen funding cut for mental health. You know, um, that's why uh, this election is important uh, because I believe that you know our current governor um, will um, continue to uh, fund some of these things that we need. You know, health care is, is very expensive. I'm a cancer survivor. And I left the hospital with 240000 in medical bills in 2006. And when you talk about health care, uh, health care is very expensive. And when we uh, fund things like mental health and what have you, it costs the state money. So um, I am definitely one that supports the mental health community. There have been cuts. Uh, I'm looking forward to uh, extending the, uh, some uh, things in Springfield and working with the governor to hopefully restore some of those things. But unfortunately, uh, cuts have been a reality. Thank you for your question. Uh, I'd like to remind everyone you're watching Political Forum, brought to you as a community service by CAN-TV. I'm Louis Mossos, and I encourage everyone to call at 312-738-1060 and get your questions into Representative Evans. I believe we do have another caller on the line. Hi, hey, caller. Yes, how you doing? Uh, uh, Mr. Evans, I know you're doing a fantastic job, and I appreciate you. That's one of the things I want to comment on. Oh, thank you. I want to ask you, what can we do about the bank crisis uh, them stealing properties, because my property was just stolen from me by Chase. Five other banks had loans on. They were so messed up, mm -hmm. they all claimed my property. And yeah. I'm still in court on this. Yeah. Well, uh, thank you for your call. You know, um, anytime, you know, homeowners have issues, like some of the issues that you brought up, uh, the earlier the better is to get on top of those issues. Uh, we have a uh, attorney general uh, who's great as far as uh, advocating for consumer protection. Uh, if you believe, uh, whether it's a bank, an individual, whomever is attempting to, to steal your property, call someone. Don't wait uh, until it's too late. You know, definitely call and reach out. Uh, there are tons of various services uh, to get you help. So we want to protect homeowners. Uh, I'm going to definitely continue to advocate for that. Thank you very much. I believe we have another caller on the line. Uh -huh. Hi, caller. You're on the air. What's hey, caller. Question? How are you? Hi, Representative. I had a question about um, financial aid for students. Yeah. Undocumented students who went to high school in the state of Illinois um, now can get in-state tuition. And I want to know, would it be possible or is there anything, um, any bills about undocumented students getting the Illinois MAP grant? I know that they would not be able to get federal funding, but um, could there be a proposal for state funding for would you, tuition for college. Okay, you you would like to see that be a reality? Yes. Okay, yeah, well, 
again, the, the MAP funding uh, is always when it's in the balance. I mean, uh, it's limited. I mean, as you know, uh, in, in many of us who attend college, since the MAP grant has been a reality, uh, the funds generally go fast. Uh, we want to increase those funding uh, for the MAP grant. Uh, but, um, you know, that's something that I, I, I'll definitely keep in mind. Uh, in terms of uh, funding MAP and health care, as we mm -hmm. said before, I think it's, uh, you know, it's hard for people to realize that has to be paid somehow, sure. and I know the tax increase has become mm -hmm. an issue in light of this election. Would you care to touch on the importance uh, of paying for all these good programs, mm -hmm. uh, social services, health care, MAP funding, education funding, uh, and the tax increase, and what your thoughts are on that? Yeah, you know, people hear about the tax increase, and right now we have a temporary tax increase that was put in place uh, under the leadership of Governor Quinn to increase our income tax up to 5%. Um, many people, and the governor has not necessarily said it's going to be a reality, but many people say we need to keep that because that uh, one and a quarter percent increase uh, that was put in place temporarily uh, funds a lot of programs. And when you take that away, that one and a quarter percent increase, um, you're talking about billions of dollars uh, taken away from the revenue of the state of Illinois. And unfortunately, some of the programs that we value are cut. Uh, educational programs are critical because they uh, yield results. You know, that MAP grant is going to make it possible for a student uh, to not be a liability but an asset as far as paying taxes, as far as uh, being a consumer. So particularly when it comes to, um, you know, to educational funding, we should never shortchange that in the state of Illinois, um, for sure. Thank you very much. Uh, I believe we have another caller on the line. Hello, caller. Hello, caller. <laughs> oh, not there. And so is the governor's race uh, yeah. something people should be paying attention to in yeah. light of, as you can tell from mm. previous calls, you know, we do need, uh, some people are saying we do need to increase yeah. revenues to certain uh, uh, certain social services, whether yeah. it be <clears throat> education mm. or... Or, uh, or medical, uh, hmm. what do you think the governor's race will, uh, how will that affect us? You know, and, and people may, could be watching and saying I'm partial because I am a Democrat and uh, Pat Quinn is a Democrat, but I don't think it's about that. I think that, you know, I'm a working class individual. Again, um, humble begin the south side of Chicago. You know, I live in the Chatham, Burnside community, so, uh, you know, no million dollar home or condo in the sky. I'm a, I'm a regular guy from the south side of Chicago. And um, we have a governor in Pat Quinn that I believe uh, cares about all residents, those on the south side of Chicago, those in Barrington, those in downtown Chicago, north side of Chicago. Uh, and that's what's needed, you know, a true public servant. Uh, protecting some of these programs are important. You know, uh, there are a lot of families um, who utilize these programs to establish themselves, particularly those educational programs, MAP grants, particularly those health care programs. You know, um, I mentioned earlier I was a cancer survivor. Our governor supported Medicaid expansion to uh, send a message to Washington, D.C. that we're going to support uh, President Obama uh, during the Affordable Health Care Act. Things like that are important, and um, who you have in leadership matters. Who's the leadership of your church? Who's the leadership in your family? Uh, who's the leadership at governor matters? All of these things matter. So anybody that's thinking about sitting on the sideline in this election, you know, think about the programs and think about uh, the people in your community depend on many of these programs. Um, and think about who's going to sustain those programs uh, to help to, um, you know, to take the next generation where they need to be. I think Governor Quinn is that individual. Uh, Democrat or not, I think you should be supporting Governor Quinn, so I can do that. And uh, Representative Evans, uh, we should be wrapping up here soon. What are yeah. some of your goals for uh, 2015 going into the new General Assembly mm -hmm. next year? Yeah, well, uh, hopefully continue to do some of the things that I've done prior. You know, um, I've been an advocate for uh, for for the environment, representing the southeast side of Chicago. I believe industry and the uh, community can work together, but industry definitely uh, needs to support uh, great environmental uh, initiatives. They've done that. Definitely home supporting homeowners. You know, The majority of my district, if you drive down through Stony Island and Cottage Grove and in the south suburban community, homeowners, I want to see those homes occupied by individuals who uh, have head of household jobs, not just part-time jobs. And also definitely protecting our senior population. We have a growing senior population in my district, and I want uh, services and uh, resources available for those seniors. Uh, and definitely I want them to feel safe. 
And we're running out of time. Mm -hmm. uh, do you are you able to elaborate on the program you sponsored for these senior citizens uh, that we spoke about earlier to protect them? Uh, in light of the housing and clouding of title. Yeah, we're talking about the bill that I partnered with with Karen Yarper. The bill is not just particularly for seniors, for homeowners in general. But unfortunately, uh, people that prey on homeowners, they want to go after the most vulnerable uh, individuals, and they generally go after senior homeowners because you think about it, many seniors, they have their homes uh, paid off, they're, they're debt-free with no lien. So um, unfortunately, many of the seniors uh, have been uh, attempted to be victimized, but uh, uh, Karen Yarber, the recorder of these, have addressed a lot of those issues, and I'm supporting Springfield. We'll continue to support housing initiatives. We and must. We are running out of time. I would urge anyone who has additional questions, feel free to contact Representative Evans uh, in his office. Uh, once again, if you need to reach him, feel free to call 773-783-8492. Uh, Representative Evans, thank you very much for appearing on Political yeah. Forum. And, th and thank you, uh, listening audience, for your time. You know, um, it's it's my uh, duty to do what I'm doing. You don't have to thank me for it. I represent the people uh, that I love. Uh, it's easy to do. And I hope to continue to, to gain your trust. If you don't know anything about me, please visit the website. I'm on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, anything you can think of. Um, hope, hoping to gain your trust. And I'd like to thank uh, the numerous callers this evening. We appreciate all your questions and your comments. Uh, our telephone technician has been Sylvia. Political Forum is brought to you as a political, as a community service by Can TV. Uh, please join us for Political Forum again next Wednesday. Yeah. Thank you. And thank you too. Great thank job, you, Representative. Appreciate it. <laughs> Good evening. Uh, yeah.